The DC AMU, which is just an acronym title for the DC Animated Movie Universe, is basically a series of movies that are interconnected that share kind of their own, I guess, somewhat cinematic universe, but instead of, you know, theatrical, it was mostly like home releases and digital. And these animated movies took really heavily inspiration from the New 52 in terms of like their aesthetic and the kind of stories that they were adapting. And one of the major characters that had a lot of screen time and a lot of movies in this universe was obviously Batman. Uh, there are four main Batman movies in this universe universe uh starting with son of batman batman versus robin batman bad blood and batman hush and you know these movies also alongside with his you know crossovers and cameos or just straight up major appearances in other movies like you know justice league movies uh, his appearance just as like dark and just other series of movies that really help make it an interconnected universe and for the most part these movies are you know either you know all right you know kind of good or some of them are you know a little bit on the negative side for me you know none of them are really bad though you know there are a lot of things that i do like i think i have more things i like than dislike but there is some fundamental issues with this overall interpretation of batman kind of just i think things that kind of missed the mark on a bit and hoping that will kind of be more avoided in the future going on if you know if with this new dc animated movie universe titled the uh, tomorrow verse which is basically just a new version i guess like a reboot after the last movie in the dc amu which was justice league dark apocalypse war first up i think one of the is biggest issues that i had for me going in was specifically the lack of bat family characters now the bat family established in this universe which was really heavily in batman bad blood i think was pretty expensive you know you had nightwing batwoman batwing luke fox damien bruce and, and at the end you kind of saw like a tease of barbara gordon um but the issue with this is that like a lot of these uh, new established characters like you know uh batwoman and batwing they don't do anything outside of this movie like you never see them do anything significant the only other appearance of them in another dc amu movie is in uh justice league dark apocalypse War, but they just get um getting killed in the end there's no dialogue they don't do anything significant they just end up dying same thing with barbara gordon and batgirl no line i, I think actually the, her other appearance was in batman hush she basically took the role of uh helena burton and huntress where in the comic huntress you know kind of rescued batman after he had fallen but now this is in the, in the movie it was just barbara gordon but yeah it's just like a lot of those characters don't do anything to do a lot of the main focus and a lot of the attention is on damian wayne and you know bruce's dynamic and along was like nightwing and but the biggest issue i think with me on top of that is the fact that this universe doesn't have jason todd or tim drake like they just completely skipped those two like in this universe the chronological order of robins is literally just dick grayson and then damian wayne like there's no mention no appearance no cameo no nothing no acknowledgement of the existence of jason todd and tim drake which is something i really hope doesn't happen with james gunn's dcu batman with the brave and the bold you know i think it's in that instance i think it's fine to bring some attention to damien but you shouldn't have to skip over any members for his expense another really big issue with this universal title is whenever they adapt famous comic book stories you know the two or i guess the few that really come to mind is the batman and son you know kind of like some of the issues from grant morrison with damian wayne's introduction um you know with son of batman it, it's kind of like a loose interpretation um but then i think another really big key one is batman versus robin which basically you had the court of owls as the main antagonists which obviously takes inspiration from scott snyder's new 52 run on batman you know volume one in volume two the court of owls of the night of the owls and obviously they take some key points here but it's not really a direct adaptation and instead of having like i guess multiple talent like individuals um a lot of like the rest of the talents like like an army is a bit more like zombified while you have like one main talent whereas in the comics that are all a lot of the talents are like trained assassins that like know how to speak and are like very fluent and aren't like brain dead was you know in the batman vs robin film it was just mainly centered on like one specific talent as like the main antagonist and you know kind of the issue with that is just you know, kind of like it's kind of strays away from the comic a bit you know there's a lot of emphasis on damien which is fine you know i think there's a lot of that for character growth but i just kind of think they missed the mark on adapting what made the scott snyder one really special you know some of the characters that were in the comic aren't in there some of the family dynamics you know all of that kind of the build up because they have to cram that entire run within like an hour or 20 minutes which is i think another thing that some of these dc movies kind of 
fall into when it comes to that problem is that whenever they adapt a story they have to make sure that it is neatly tied within like a minute and 20 or without uh, an hour and 20 minutes rather like at peak most like 90 minutes instead of like a show or like a two or three hour movie and then with batman bad blood um it took inspiration from grant morris's one in which dick became batman um but that didn't really last long it was kind of like a gimmick that lasted maybe about like 20 minutes and then obviously like bruce came back you know brainwashed by talia and a thing from the new 52 that was adapted in that movie was the appearance of the heretic who's like you know an adult clone of damian wayne but they do literally nothing with his character like or anything significant like he's in it you know he has an intimidating presence and then he just dies by talia as she's like the real big bad so his actual appearance in the movie just felt meaningless you know just small stuff like that whenever they cut when it comes to i guess adapting these stories but i think the biggest fumble when it comes to adapting a popular batman comic storyline into the movies is the animated movie batman hush this one i think kind of rubs me the wrong way the most you know kind of especially with the big change of changing the hush's identity from thomas elliott to the riddler edward nigma i saw a way to destroy you and to get revenge on the criminal swine who disrespected me in the past i needed a new persona my true identity had to be kept hush hush and i've got to say in all honesty um it's the biggest piece of dog shit that i have ever heard and the fact that there's a lot of things they cut out from the comic that made it so special you know kind of him facing a myriad of his rogues gallery in that comic you know whether it's like racial ghoul or whatever but i understand if they didn't do that because you know they killed off racial ghoul instead of batman and just kind of just like these small little changes here and there you know there's no tim drake there's no jason todd you know like there's not really a, you don't really see a lot of the bat family in that movie it's very centered around like batman and catwoman like you, there's like a small cameo from damien you know nightwing's in the movie for a bit and there's like that one cameo from batgirl and like that's about it um but i i, I i'm glad they did that one like superman cameo or you know appearance right but you know and the, like the aesthetic of the movie visually is a little dull like i feel like it's not as impactful it doesn't really pop as much as like jim lee's art um but yeah it's just it's kind of like stuff like that just kind of rose me the wrong way the whole selena kyle leaving bruce thing because he refused to kill the riddler even though that's has been his cold code the whole time so i understand why she'd be surprised by that but you know it's just stuff like that i just hope that in the future whenever they adapt comic stories they don't go out of their way to change it just for the sake of surprising the audience it's, it's just weird and kind of wrapping up some of the major issues with that i think the some of the adaptation of villains i think was a little mishandled in these series of dc amu batman movies uh first off you have like deathstroke he was the main antagonist in son of batman but the issue i had kind of had with deathstroke is that dude is super nerfed like batman just like takes him down in like a couple of shots those throws a couple of punches and just defeats him easily and like he's over here struggling with a fight with like damian wayne um he was done much better in teen titans the judas contract though i think they really did a good job with him there um they did a bit of much better job he was a lot stronger he's a lot more formidable and intimidating but in son of batman you know he barely interacts with batman himself like they don't even come face to face until like the end of the movie and it's like a really lackluster fight i guess the climactic battle really is between him and damien as you know damien's a really center character and then you kind of have like uh i think i think talon and batman vs robin was a really cool villain is when they just like a one and done kind of thing he he is the most formidable though or at least one of the most formidable in my opinion in the main batman movies in this universe he's probably the best one you know like he's very combat heavy you kind of like him how he tries to manipulate damian wayne you know to join the court but i think how the court was handled was a little lackluster and then uh i think the weird kind of uh interpretation of talia al ghul in batman mad blood was weird because in batman or the son of batman rather she was you know really allies with batman and she had a different demeanor as with batman bad blood she's just all of a sudden like this like crazy like race al ghul like this like crazy villain that wants to do certain evil things it tries to like brainwash bruce and you know doesn't really care for damien as much it's just kind of a weird switch up that we don't really get to see and then obviously you know i've talked about earlier you know with hush you know just like the, the things they kind of did there i mean i guess they did do some comic accurate things 
leading up to the reveal of Hush, but then after that, just fumbled that like completely. But overall, those are just some of my thoughts and kind of issues that I've had with the DC AMU Batman that I hope the future of DC animated movies or just Batman media kind of avoids in the future. Like I said, you know, I, I overall, I like most of these movies. Like, I don't think any of them are bad. Like, they are watchable and I do like some of them, but, you know, there's just kind of just issues that I kind of have with it as a Bat Family fan. Uh, but, you know, just to kind of hope for, for it in the future.